It doesn't look like it today, but we are entering winter. We had our first really cold night last night. And next weekend it'll be 17 degrees, so it's uh, getting very cold. It is uh, late November. So if you want to know how to get free heat, if you have an endless supply of wood, like we do, from the sawmill, from the scraps, all you do is buy yourself a wood stove like that one, a wood furnace, put it somewhere remote from the house, run the pipes over to the house and put heat exchangers in your air handlers and turn it on that's it that's all you need we go from an electric bill of 300 bucks a month down to a negligible amount needed for the uh, fan in the air handler to be running uh, on its own so let me show you how to do it it's pretty quick but it does take a full day of work um, and it's not clean <laughs> you'll see that in just a second so the last video ended with me plumbing in the pipes, which they are there. This is the start of putting the heat exchanger in. This is the air handler that services um, the bedroom end of the house. Uh, I've got to fix the frame of it. That won't take a minute. And I'm going to put the air handler on the pressure side. Air handlers with heat exchangers work very well with the heat exchanger on either side but the disadvantage of having it on the return side is that the air handler itself has to operate in 170 degrees which uh, i'm not sure if it's okay with that so i'm going to not do that to it and put it on the uh, the pressure feed side the disadvantage of the pressure feed the pressure feed side is that if you're putting the cold loop on for air conditioning um it's better to have the air conditioning on the uh, return air end because i can then take the condensate out of the air handler far easier but no big deal doesn't really matter and i'm gonna see if i can strip all that out fix the frame put some support under it take that end off see what I'm dealing with So the filthy grunt work is done. The transition, the old transition, is removed. So I've got an 11 by 19 on the one side, oriented vertically. And I've got a 16 by 12 on the other side, oriented vertically. And I've got a 20 by 21 inch heat exchanger to put in between them. So I'm gonna work that out outside of this nasty space, draw it out on a piece of paper, make it outside, bring it in here. So that's the shiny new heat exchanger that is going in between the air handler and the ductwork. So, and these are the taps for the water in and water out. So I'm going to see what I need as a transition and keep it as small as possible. So let me draw it out on a piece of cardboard, as we all do, and uh, see if it works. Well, it had to be pulled apart to get it in here um, and then, of course, reassemble and tape it up inside. So that should 
be the right shape and size. I have to bend the flange outwards so that I can screw to the, through it to the air handler. But I don't want to do that until I've offered it up to see if it fits. I'm sure it will. And then I'll have to bend it and screw it and etc. But let's just uh, put this on time lapse and struggle with that just for a little bit. So mechanically, it's mounted to the heat exchanger, to the, the heat exchanger, to the air handler. Uh, it's all sealed up, screwed in, taped up. Everything is good. I'm happy with that. Uh, started to put the pipe work on, but ran out of PEX. So I need a little bit more PEX, and I need to do the sheet metal work on the other side. Um, this should work well. It comes out of an 11 by 19 out of the air handler, past the emergency heat element. It then expands substantially, slows down, passes through the heat exchanger, which is a wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, wonderful thing from an efficiency perspective, and then speeds up again the other side as it enters the duct into a, uh, a 12 by 16. So I'll make the duct work up that side. I'll get some insulation and uh, screw that together and tape it up tomorrow, and it should be working by the end of day tomorrow. Well, I left the easier part until last. So I just gotta, I've gotta straighten out the lip on the duct on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna cut each of the four sides of the box separately and fit them. Um, that way I can be just a little more careful with where I put my screws so I don't accidentally punch holes in the heat exchanger. So one panel at a time, here we go. Well, the duct is almost closed up, uh, screwed and taped uh, on the inside and the outside. Um, all looking nice and parallel and square. Got this side piece to put on. Uh, insulate it all, connect the pipes up, insulate the pipes, turn it on. Well, the ducts are all insulated. It's all buttoned up nice and tight. I've got to get the the two lines over to it. Hook those up. That's all there is left to do. And then turn the thing on. Those are the uh, the lines in that four inch flex pipe. There are two independently uh, insulated lines that come from the wood furnace outside. Um, one goes straight through to the water heater and then continues to the heat exchanger at the far end of the house and then returns and then comes up and through this heat exchanger and then returns back to the furnace. So all I've done is physically mount a heat exchanger in the outflow from the air handler so everything functions as normal except we have this very hot element uh, 170 degrees in fact in the airflow so since nothing has happened 
been changed with regard to the uh, central heat and air. All I have to do to operate the, uh, the system and get the free heat is make sure that the system is off, but the fan is on. And after a second or two to think about it, it'll start blowing nice hot air. The temperature of the water leaving the furnace is 175. By the time it gets to the house, it's lost a little. It's maybe 172. By the time it's been through the first heat exchanger, which is connected to the water heater, it loses a couple of degrees, goes through this, the big heat exchanger at the other end of the house, loses another couple of degrees, and it is about 160 degrees as it gets to this end, returns to the tank. It's blowing, and boy is that hot. Well, so with a central heat and air, you can't really appreciate the, uh, the heat of the air coming into the house. It is 15 to 20 degrees hotter than the air inside the house but it's not easy to judge that. With this, as soon as you get within a foot or two, uh, it feels like red hot air. So it is, uh, it is amazing. You could sunbathe by the air ducts. So that's it, free of charge, virtually. Um, the heat, the uh, heat exchanger cost uh, 150 bucks. The pipe to plug it in was nothing. I'd say the total cost is $250. And there is the furnace out there ticking away with free wood, scrap wood from our sawmill and a few trees that drop, limbs that are too small for the sawmill. So free heat and it's tremendous.